Today I've come to RSB Strumpshaw Fen and I'm really excited to see what kind of creatures we're going to see. Of course it's an RSB reserve so it's famous for its birds so I'm going to try and focus on those today. My bird knowledge isn't fantastic but I've got a book with me and there's loads of signs and helpful people about so we should be fine. Uh, so I'm walking through the woodland trail right now beginning to regret wearing shorts because it is quite hot but there's a lot of insects very interested in my bare flesh and I've seen warning signs uh, warning about ticks so <laughs> we'll have to see how it goes but anyway let's see what kind of things we can find. <laughs> The first bird on display is also apparently the UK's favourite bird, the European Robin. Seen throughout the year, they are often associated with Christmas due to their frequent appearances in gardens through the winter months. They may be cute, but they are aggressively territorial and will drive away other birds. They are some of the earliest birds to start the dawn chorus and one of the last to stop singing in the evening. They can often be heard singing in the middle of the night if near streetlights. One of the most common flying animals seen today was not a bird, but a small dragonfly. This is the ruddy darter. It looks very similar to the common darter and the two can be tricky to tell apart. The easiest way to tell them apart is to look at their legs. Ruddy darters have all black legs, but other darters have yellow stripes. The ruddy darter will often perch on a tree or a branch facing out over an open space where they will scan for prey. They will usually return to the same perch after chasing prey or seeing off a rival. They are very common species in central and southern England but are fairly rare in Scotland. So I'm coming to my first hide, um, hoping to sort of sit down and check out all the birds that could be here. Uh, unfortunately there is a single mallard in the uh, pond bit there, so um, a little bit disappointing. <laughs> I'll sit here for a little while, but uh, there's another couple of hides around, we'll, we'll hopefully see something. But let's not be too dismissive of the mallard. It's a very popular and familiar duck, and for many children, feeding the ducks at the local park is a first introduction to wildlife, and who knows, maybe set some on the path to a lifelong love of nature. Of course, ducks aren't the only thing on the water today. After the mild disappointment of the first hide, I was extremely pleased to see this. It's a scorpion fly, the first one I've seen this year. I fell in love with them when I saw one for the first time last year. The scorpion fly is a strange looking insect that is often found among stinging nettles and brambles. It has a long beak-like projection from its head that it uses to feed. It scavenges on dead insects and frequently steals the contents of spiders webs. The male lives up to its name by sporting a scorpion-like tail, which it uses in courtship displays. Adults usually emerge at night, but mating can be a dangerous game for the male, who might easily be killed by the female. So he presents her with a nuptial gift of a dead insect or a mass of saliva, which apparently the female likes. The scorpion-like tail does not sting, but has two claspers at the end used during mating. My most liked photo on Instagram is of a female scorpion fly I took last year. You can follow me on Instagram at Greg's Wildlife. And if you're enjoying this video, I've got loads more like it on my channel, so why not subscribe so you can get to see more? I do videos every Sunday.
but it's time to move on to the next hide. Of course there are plenty more mallards to see, but there were a few other species of bird on display, including one very rare bird which I'll get to in just a moment. This is a moorhen, a common bird found in many lakes, ponds and rivers. Closely related to the coot, it can be distinguished by its red beak with a yellow tip. Moorhens are omnivores, eating anything from snails, insects and small fish to berries, seeds and grasses. Another treat on offer was this mute swan, one of Britain's largest and heaviest birds with a wingspan of up to 2.4 metres and can fly at a speed of up to 50 miles per hour. The swan wasn't alone, it was accompanied by a pair of cygnets. These young swans will stay with their parents until the spring of the following year after hatching, when they will join a flock which they will stay with until they are around three years old. I did catch a brief glimpse of this grey heron in flight. You can get a good look at its 1.8 metre wingspan before it disappears into the reeds. Herons eat lots of fish but will also eat amphibians, small mammals like voles and small birds like ducklings. But the main attraction of this hide was a non-native bird, the great white egret. It's a large white heron that eats fish, insects and frogs that it spears with its long sharp beak. It was once a rare visitor to the UK, but sightings have become more frequent over the last few decades, and some have even started breeding here. The first pair to breed in the UK were in Somerset in 2012. It's estimated that only around 35 birds spend the winter in the UK. During the 1800s, the egret's feathers became desirable in the fashion industry. The bird was almost wiped out in North America during this time, and the European population suffered a catastrophic decline but species numbers have increased massively since the 1980s. Alright, well we saw a great egret and that was pretty good. Um, they're pretty rare birds, so that was a uh, successful bit better than uh, just seeing a mallard. So there's a couple of other interesting things in that hide, so that was definitely more successful than the first one. So we're carrying on, I believe there's another hide uh, to look in. Um, hopefully we'll see something else there. Been by horsefly, that wasn't fun. That was quite painful, and uh, it's quite a lot of blood for, for a little fly. Well, actually, really large flies, not like mosquitoes. It's uh, nasty. Here we see a pair of migrant hawkers in what's known as a mating wheel. The male will grip the female with claspers on the end of his abdomen and the female will bend her abdomen up under the male. The migrant hawker is common across Europe and into North Africa and is found as far east as Japan. As the name suggests, they are migratory and although firmly established as a breeding species in the south of the UK, the number can be hugely swelled with the arrival of immigrants from the continent in late summer. Crossing some railway tracks led me onto the path back to the entrance to the reserve. Here was one last spot to view the birds. Less of a hide and more of a viewing platform, it did give a wide view over this section of the water. Again, it was mostly mallards with a couple of coots. I did spot this white duck. Again, I believe it's a mallard, but its all white coloration indicates it's a domestic breed that either lives close by or has escaped somewhere and joined up with its wild relatives. Well, that's all we've got time for today. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you did, please make sure you leave a like and a comment down below. It really does help out the channel. And if you did enjoy it and you want to see more like this, there's loads more on the channel, make sure you subscribe and you can come back next week. I put out videos every Sunday. Uh, come back next week and see more videos just like this one. So thank you once again for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.